Angel Talia Chapter 7 The Mysterious Boy A couple of hours ago, after rescuing Sarah, I got a message from an unknown sender. They wanted me to meet them on the rooftop, alone. This is weird. I should be suspicious about the sender. I mean, it could be a trap, a trick to try to catch me off guard. Do, do they know my secret? The fact that I'm not just human? My hands are a bit shaky, my heart is racing, my pulse is rushing. I, I feel like my head could explode. This feeling of uneasiness is strong. But it's best to get this over and done with. It was night. Alfred opens the door to the roof and has a look around. He doesn't see anyone suspicious or out of place. And then he spots someone, standing near the edge. He had strawberry blonde hair and a pink shirt with a dark red waistcoat. And for some reason, only has one wing on his back. Alfred stood there. Who was this boy? Why did he want to see him? You're Alfred, are you not? The boy turns around and faces Alfred. Alfred was shocked from the boy's appearance. He looked just like his father, but how? That's not possible. Who are you? Alfred panics. The boy raised his hands and waved them down. Calm down, Alfred. I'm not going to hurt you. I contacted you to meet me here so I could talk to you, the boy explains. Alfred's expressions morphed into confusion. Why did you want to see me, whoever you are? Alfred shudders, but tries to stay calm. My name is Oliver, Alfred explains in a calm tone. Somehow, Alfred feels better from the tone of the boy's voice. A while later, Oliver and Alfred are sitting near the edge looking towards the city. The lights were dazzling and beautiful. Alfred couldn't help but smile. Alfred? Alfred spoke quietly. Hmm? What's up? Alfred asked politely. Alfred looks down. Are you upset about what happened to your father? Alfred asks. Guilt and sadness filled Alfred's heart as he looked down, thinking about his answer. Of course I am. If it wasn't for that person, that experiment years ago, he wouldn't be a blind man now, Alfred responds. Oliver looks over, feeling sorry for him. Alfred, it wasn't your fault. Despite the loss of sight, your father isn't the kind of person to give up. It's funny, you're all just like your father. Oliver smiles. Alfred looks over at him. How do you know my dad? he asked. I met him at church a few times. He helped look up to God when I was lost. And I've been hard throughout most of my life, Alfred explains. Alfred looks back at the wing. Oliver, what happened to one of your wings? Alfred asked. Oliver looked down. It's difficult to explain. Oliver spoke in a sad tone. Alfred pats him on the back, carefully. It's alright, dude. I understand how you feel. Alfred confronts him. Alfred looks up. My flying isn't as good. I can only fly a certain distance, and if I flew for too long, I would lose the lift and fall. Alfred couldn't imagine how that would feel, only having one wing and not be able to fly properly. Why did you come here? Alfred asks. You said it was to talk, but there's another reason, isn't there? Oliver nods. I was running away from horrible people. They wanted me to die, so I was making a run for it. Alfred's eyes widen. Someone wanted to kill this guy? That's terrible! 
Were they the ones that may have taken his wing? I have to protect him. Dude, do you want to stay here with me? Alfred offers. Over looks up, confused, then responds. You want me to stay? Alfred nodded. It's no problem, dude. I want to help you as much as I can, he said, smiling. Alfred didn't know what to say at this point. He didn't really have anywhere else to go, and he was worried about what else would happen if he didn't take up this offer and be in a safe home. Yes, I wish to stay here, Alfred responds. Alfred smiles and leads him to his apartment. Alfred was allowed to stay in the spare room. He was amazed at how clean it was. It was really soothing style and color. It felt like a home. Alfred tucks himself into bed and drifts off into a peaceful sleep. Father! A young Alfred calls out, running to Arthur, who was drinking tea at the correct time. Alfred, what's wrong? Alfred had tears in his eyes, showing Arthur a small, deep gash on the palm of his hand. Arthur's expression turned to worry. Oh, Alfred, you've hurt yourself. Arthur spoke softly. He holds one of his hands over the gash. Now keep still, he demands politely, allowing the power of healing to do its work. After a few seconds, the gash was gone. Alfred was amazed. Wow, that's amazing, Father. How did you do that? Arthur chuckled. <laughs> oh, Alfred, a magician never reveals his secrets. Alfred frowns, but he knows that his father was just teasing him with that. Father? Alfred speaks. Yes, Alfred? Arthur responds. Um, what? should I be when I grow up? The child asked. Arthur had to think long and hard. Alfred was born part angel, but because of his age, he was not yet developed the long wings he has himself. Alfred, my son, you can be whoever you want to be. You don't want to be something that you don't want to, not even for everyone else's sake. You should always believe in yourself, and thus everyone will believe in you, no matter what you are. Arthur answers, in reassurance. Alfred nods. Okay, thank you, Father. He smiles, and both Arthur and Alfred walked back home. Alfred sat up on his bed. Everyone will believe in me, no matter what I am, huh? Alfred whispers to himself, looking down, but not everyone would believe in a half-human angel. He looks over at the picture on the wall, a small reminder of what his family life was. A faded memory he wanted back. <laughs>